Hello and welcome back. Um, here we have uh, Aki who is going to talk to us about uh, lessons learned from running API programs on a global scale. So uh, quite a big topic for us. So uh, Aki, you're presenting already, so uh, I'll leave you to it. OK, thank you, Alan. So good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining my talk, Lessons Learned from Running API Programs on a Global Scale. So before jumping into the details, let me give a little bit of a background for the topic. So I work as a lead architect in Nautil's cloud team, but before joining Nautil, I've been working nearly 20 years in building software in automotive retail business. And in my opinion, automotive retail is really exciting industry because cars are the most expensive consumer products available. And the whole industry has been disrupted in the past years by different technical innovations. At the moment, it's a bit unclear whether consumers want to own vehicles anymore, which has given an opportunity for new business models such as mobility as a service. Also, it is worth noting that China has become the biggest car market worldwide. And for example, VW sold over 3 million cars in China last year, which is roughly half of their total number of sold cars in the last year. So the automotive industry is navigating through turbulent times, and this forces industry to reinvent themselves to evolve at faster pace. So APIs are all about speed and innovation, and, and best API programs have potential for exponential scale and growth, which is something that traditional business models can't really compete with. And now that I worked as a consultant for some time, and I've been helping our customers to transform and adapt API strategies, I really noticed that regardless of industry, there are some common challenges that they are struggling with, and it might not be that obvious where to start. And that's really the uh, why I put together this talk, and hopefully you'll walk away with some new ideas how to accelerate your API programs. So basically, the purpose of API program is all, always to allow you to adapt faster. And you might want to modernize your current IT infrastructure by using multi-speed IT. That's where we talk about private APIs. Or you want to extend your current product portfolio with third-party offering, which is partner APIs, or even if you're really ambitious, you want to transform into platform-based business models, which is on the upper corner here, right side, public APIs. Um, a friend of mine, Lou Powell, wrote recently a really brilliant blog post about API interface quadrants. And in short, the blog post explains that there are two main factors that affect your API design. And it's how many consumers your APIs will have and how close and how familiar they are with your business. So in essence, number of consumers is the total number of different API consumers on your platform. And when you have a very high number of consumers, it means that your APIs need to be easy to consume as otherwise the process of ramping up new consumers won't scale. And familiarity and proximity is about the distance and how well they understand your business concepts. Typically, your API should have very low bar entry if your consumer don't know your business at all. And I really recommend looking at that blog post. There's a link on the left side. So when working on a global scale, your API consumers can be geographically distributed and they don't necessarily have deep expertise about your domain. This means that your APIs need to be easy to consume, but at the same time, you get additional complexity by having to deal with localization and globalization issues. For example, an address in Japan starts with the largest geographical entity and then proceeds to the most specific funds. So for some cases, this might be OK, but it is always a balancing act between reusability and complexity. In general, the more reusable something is, the less usable it will be. And this is very much true in API design as well. 
So when going global, you need to ask yourself, what is the lowest common denominator that is common across all, all markets and, and how complex you can allow your APIs to be? But yeah, that's really enough for an introduction. And let's jump into some lessons I've learned during the journey. The first one is a good place to start. This is an important one because you want to get this as right as possible from the get-go because failure might mean lost opportunity. And I've seen approaches, especially in the bigger organizations, which I, I call as we will build and they will come. But I think that's really a, a failure mode because it typically means that the organizational change is not there and therefore you don't get that required agility that you are looking for. So my advice is to come up with something that supports your organizational strategy and vision. And it's really small enough to get rapid customer feedback and it allows to move faster in the future. So an ideal project really demonstrates the potential of your API program and will gain momentum in the organizations and sets the scene for repeatable success. The next one is thinking outside in. So typically the way to think APIs is based on underlying software and think your APIs in terms of current technology and especially limitations in the implementation. This is very much an old school thinking in my opinion where reusing typically means modifications and collaboration with the service owners. While it might still be the right thing to do in certain scenarios it doesn't really scale out with higher number of consumer and the other way to think about it is outside in which basically means exposed business capabilities without exposing any of the underlying implementation details uh, the benefit is that you typically create a facade between your underlying services and API consumers, and now you can move faster pace outside of your service layers. The challenge in this approach is of course that you need to get business owners involved very early on, and they need to be committed to create this new conceptual model for the domain. Uh, I typically use a technical domain driven design because that really helps you to conceptualize your domain. And if you're not familiar with DDD, I, I really recommend taking a closer look. Then prefer products over projects. Projects are a very common way to fund software development and it is temporary construct to achieve a certain predefined scope. And typically when the scope gets delivered, the team will be split and assigned to another project. Naturally, this way of working is challenging in API projects because the, ideally the API team should be able to deliver value, value incrementally since team is driven by feedback and value prioritization. And also the products are packaged for consumption. So they don't necessarily map one-to-one -one between raw APIs. So the team is there to make sure that the product is easy to adopt and consumable. So a good product is like any other consumer product. You can test it and possibly purchase it right away. And if you look at open APIs in the wild, too many of them doesn't really have this capability. But for API-driven business, I believe this is an essential. And a good example of great productization is, is at Twilio. It doesn't really take more than 15 minutes to get a mobile phone number and send SMS message by using their service. And I think that's a brilliant developer experience. Then API design is a key, but in my opinion, the focus is way too often at HTTP headers and HTTP verbs and other technicalities. These are, of course, important topics, but it's far more important to get the software delivery lifecycle right and make sure that the people in different roles can collaborate and contribute to the design. 
And the key is really the consistency across all those domains that you might have so that they are easy to adopt by the consumers. And I, I'd also recommend against creating capabilities beforehand because you might need might not need those later. And the reason is that when you do something beforehand, it's really difficult to get it right without real customer demand. And always in API design, it'll be a breaking change to remove or something later. And there might not be easy way to actually find whether someone is actually reading the field. And I've been told sometimes that it's just easier to do this at the same time with other modifications. But in my opinion, it's more a, a sign of a bad process and shouldn't be done. And I've usually dealt with REST APIs. And the biggest challenge has always been that a very few business entities work like documents, which means that common HTTP verbs are not the best way to model the domain. But then on the other hand, more advanced patterns such as REST without pot might cause confusion too. So it's always a little bit of a balancing act between different concepts. And one thing worth mentioning here is that there are some standards available for common business entities, like the ones from Open Application Group. These are very generic and therefore may be less usable and i've seen this quite many times in automotive industry that someone has taken a standard and then modified it for their own use it can be a good starting point to look at the existing standard but by my experience general purpose objects can be very difficult to deal with so i i'd recommend designing for a certain demand or use case then platform thinking is about standardizing delivery capabilities and make them self-serviceable so that multiple teams can produce new APIs in a consistent manner. There can be teams responsible for shared capabilities, but the point is to allow scale-out engineering for a larger number of teams and therefore move faster. For example, in one of the recent API projects that I I was involved, we set the target that generating API service from open API specification with deployment to AWS shouldn't take that more than five minutes. And that's what you achieve with platform thinking. So basically platforms are an engine to create repeatable value. At first stage, it's mostly about figuring out what are the repeatable operations in your process and then make them self-service. And the biggest challenge here is that, that the platform thinking requires fixed set of technologies because otherwise it will be too expensive to maintain. And especially if you do client SDKs and other shared components with multiple technologies, it's really difficult to achieve. Uh, internal developer experience, I think it's fairly easy to build around GitHub processes and because of modern version control systems such as GitLab or GitHub offers a nice way nice ways to automate different different steps. And then one of my favorites is, is onboarding experience. And when you think about API platforms, they are really complex products and they have users with completely different, different needs. So typically you have at least API teams producing new APIs and a platform team operating the underlying software, as well as product owners working on documentation and productization and API consumers using the products. And all these use cases require different experience, but they are partly overlapping. And I really think that great consumer experience is derived from great developer experience. So this is really a, a worth to invest in. And what I found challenging in onboarding is that it can take really 
a lot of time to onboard a new consumer, especially in partner programs. And it can be as long as six to 12 months, especially if there are some commercial negotiations to be done. And it's other challenging thing as if partners require modifications to your existing APIs, and you end up doing them on a piecemeal basis, then there's always a risk that your APIs become inconsistent. And this is really where the product thinking is really required. Uh, there's a lot, a lot of tooling available for APIs, but most commonly you would need at least some sort of API management tools. And API management tools varies from really simple edge gateways to uh, enterprise grade platforms such as APG and everything in between, really. And when it comes to API common concerns, I'd recommend either buying or leveraging open source because I've seen some homemade tooling in this space and usually they are not great. So I've done API platform evaluations for different customers and typically key requirements are that they can be operated via APIs and they support continuous delivery and CI CD pipelines. And you can store all artifacts in the version control and get the, the actual tooling automated via version control. Basically this means that it allows to build a development process that is more loosely coupled from the tooling, which makes them easier to replace at later stages. Uh, developer portals are really a must feature, but they can be really tricky because quite many of them are based on some existing CM system as, as Drupal, for example, and they are typically quite limited and if there's a need to do heavy modifications, then it might be better to build your own own portal with tooling that is aligned with your technology strategy. I did one just recently using a CMS called Gatsby JS, and it's not that hard as it might feel to get started. And also keep in mind that many API gateways are really very rich in functionality and it might be tempting to build an over ambitious api gateway by putting too much logic into the gateway and i'd really recommend keeping it simple and just handle those common concerns like routing and security and monitoring and place your business logic where it should be alongside your other business code so these are really the, uh, the main key themes to get started. And really, the, I think the most challenging part is what to do next. Now, you have impressed the organization by your ability to move fast. And it's really time to make it sustainable and scale out to continuous value creation. And Bigger organizations are typically used to work in silos and they are not necessarily fully aware what other teams are doing. And this is really the most challenging part because service-based architecture is very different and requires a new, new mindset. So one way of doing is, this is to do it like Jeff Bezos did it in his API mandate and just basically let everyone know the new way of working and the consequences if not following his orders. But I think this might not work in every organization. But really, beware of falling back to gated governance processes and metrics that drive the wrong behavior. In instead, Try to drive the right behavior by using cross-functional teams. Have a clear vision statement and standards for collaboration. The uh, target is to have autonomous but highly aligned and loosely coupled teams because that's the way to scale out. Okay, so this is really my last slide. I, I hope. I explain what are the main drivers when starting an API program and why it is 
more an organizational challenge than a technical challenge. Um, digital transformation is all about change and it will be disruptive. So it's just like my colleague says that if it doesn't hurt, you're not doing it right. And when you get started, start with really a small, small team of heroes and try to think forward how to actually scale out your processes and how to build the repeatable success from starting small. And I'm really a big believer of high technical standards such as continuous delivery and high level of automation. These are really fundamentals that are really difficult to add later. So I recommend building them from the get go. And this, this really concludes my talk. So thank you very much for joining. And if there are any questions, please let me know. Okay, Aki, thanks very much. Uh, that, that really resonated with me. I, I, I've come to a lot of the same conclusions my, myself in, in my time working around as well. Um, there are no questions right now in the chat, but of course, um, there's gonna be a longer Q&A session at, uh, 5.15, and I think a lot of people are saving some really tricky questions for that one as well. So <laughs> we can look. Okay, looking forward. Great. But I have a couple of questions in, in, in the meantime, uh, just to follow up with a few things that resonated there. I mean, the whole Jeff Bezos thing, right? You know, do this or you will be fired. Um, yeah, and you can't really say that in Europe, but, you know, it's definitely um, – something you'd sometimes would like to say to to get the whole organization you know aligned around the topic and uh, and that's effectively what we're saying right is that you know i think you got to have an executive sponsor you know on the c-suite hopefully that that puts some pressure behind the organization to to change and really adopt it you know have you seen um you know the customers you're talking to have, have you seen that kind of activity from from top down or is it more bottom up yeah, I've seen I've seen both, and I think one of the uh, the worst ideas to run an API program is to run an API program for cost reduction. It's it should be always driven by new businesses. And one of the uh, sessions we had actually involved all C level executives in a company, and I think that's a really good way to do that if that's possible that get everyone to the same room and make the vision statement together because that's actually the most important that there's a organizational strategy and if you can create a vision statement that is based your organizational strategy then getting funding based on that is much easier than than doing bottom up and, and trying to push things upward. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely agree with that. And, uh, you know, the second thing is that really stood out was that you came to the same conclusion I did that, you know, there's a lot of these uh, API uh, management vendors who are creating developer portals based on Drupal, which was kind of like cool 10 years ago, but yeah, and today it's not really cutting it. And, um, you know, that we're looking towards more, like you said, like Gatsby, React, with like a Node.js backend. It's very simple nowadays to, to get this going. And, you know, I also create a company to create these API portals on that very yeah. basis. So that, that really resonated with me. Thanks for that. Uh, that's good uh, validation. Thanks. But hey, uh, thanks. And I, I'll see you shortly uh, in the Q&A. Um, uh, yeah, so see you soon. Thank you. Thank you for all joining the talk.